Hey everyone, this is Brian from the Tennis IQ Podcast. Josh and I hope that you are enjoying the content and discussions that we put out week after week. If you'd like to support the podcast and help us to continue to produce quality episodes, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash tennis IQ podcast slash membership. Currently, we have three tiers of support, the fan level at $3 per month, the supporter level at $7 per month, and the champion level at $20 per month. Benefits of joining the Tennis IQ podcast community include episode transcripts, participation in book club discussions, and access to monthly masterclasses with me and Josh. For more on these benefits of support, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash tennis IQ podcast slash membership. Thank you so much. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Tennis IQ Podcast. I'm Josh Berger. And I'm Brian Lomax. And today, Josh and I are going to build on some of the recent topics that we've been discussing, things like acceptance um, and look at a concept that is really true in all of sport, which is this idea of uncertainty. Uh, The uncertainty of outcomes, the uncertainty of maybe even what happens after the outcome and how that affects tennis players and how it can be a source of stress and anxiety. And and if you think about just in regular life, just the uncertainty of what happens day to day, for many of us, can be uh, a source of uh, of anxiety, maybe even just as a mood, a mood of anxiety, not feeling too good about what could happen, not feeling good about maybe the emotions that go along with that, um, you know, the unpleasant emotions that we might be looking to avoid. And I think sport is actually a great opportunity for us to understand this concept of uncertainty in life, uncertainty in sport, and how we can learn to uh, deal with it better. It's another great example, I think, of how a sport like tennis, again, conducted in the right environment, can be great for training us to be stronger human beings, stronger people of character, uh, more functional in our lives. Um, And I think there are also different matchups in tennis that we can get into, Josh, that May have, some may have more uncertainty than others, which may present yep. different problems, and um, especially as one goes through a match. But <clears throat> maybe just to you know start off with your thoughts on the topic, Josh. You know, when you hear uncertainty in a, you know in sport, in life, you know in tennis, what are what are some of the thoughts that first come to your mind? Yeah, I mean, un- uncertainty is ever present. There's there's always uncertainty anytime you play. Anything could happen. Whenever you play, you you could be the higher rated player, the higher UTR rated player or, or ranked player by quite a bit. You could be the lower ranked player by quite a bit, but anything could happen. There, there are always upsets. Players get injured. Players pull out. Things happen. That's life. That's life. There's no, there's no guarantees. Um, it, it actually, you know, when, when I, Oftentimes, when I when I'll talk to people about um, sports psychology or you know working on the mental game, um, sometimes people will say, "Okay, but you know, how do we know this is going to be effective, or how can we measure if this is going to be effective?" And I'll say, "You know, there there are no guarantees in life. If I was offering some sort of guarantee, I would be dishonest, right?" Um, And I I think that the same is true anytime you step onto the tennis court. Anytime you are competing, there is some sort of uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. Can you guess what's going to happen? Sure. Can you try to predict it? Sure. Most people, most people do. Most people, okay, if I'm playing someone who I've beaten before, or I'm playing someone who I have a higher rating or ranking than, I might guess that I'm going to win or vice versa, right? If I'm playing someone who has a great reputation or I've or I've lost to this person, or they're rated a reg tire, or maybe they play in a style that I haven't matched up as well against in the past, uh, I might predict that I'm going to lose. But ultimately, that there always is a certain level of uncertainty. And, and a, partly, that's, that's why we play. 
if we knew what was going to happen when we played, that would take away all all of the excitement and fun out of it, right? Okay, we know what's gonna we know what's gonna happen out here. Then you know, let's then let's just kind of play the match out. No, rather than that, there there is that level of uncertainty. There is that level of not knowing the end result, and we that, that that's why we play to to find out. Of course, there are other benefits, and as you mentioned, Brian, tennis can be a an excellent vehicle for really learning really important life skills, becoming a better person, things like that. But from purely a per- competitive aspect, um, if if there wasn't that level of uncertainty, it wouldn't be as as exciting to play. It wouldn't be as interesting because you would know exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, and I think that always brings us back to, um, I'm sure this is a conversation you have with your students, Josh, is that uh, they start talking about how much they, they love winning, how important winning is. And if you think about it, that's about certainty of results, wanting to win all the time. And, and sure, that's great. Um, and then, you know, in, in our position, we, we pivot and say, all right, you know, we have the formula for you winning all the time. You know, do you want to hear it? Of course they do. They want to hear it, right? <laughs> okay. You can just play six-year-olds or eight-year-olds and you'll win all the time. But as you said, without that uncertainty in the result, it becomes boring after a while. There's no challenge remaining there. And it's a good way to actually help people understand that it's really not about winning all the time. It's, it's something greater than that, really pursuing how you can be the best you can be. Um, but that's a very frequent conversation that we have with with clients who put so much emphasis on winning and outcomes. Um, but there's also uncertainty just even how you'll perform from you know match to match. And that can cause uh, stress throughout. So like you were saying, there are a number of matchups that can occur in tennis. Perhaps you're playing someone who you believe you should beat. Maybe there is a big gap in the rating. Uh, maybe you're playing against someone who you think is much better than you. There's, there's a gap there. And then you might be playing that match that's right in your zone. And that's the one that probably has the most uncertainty for all of us as players. Um, the others have some uncertainty, but it's a little bit, a little bit less in some ways, right? You probably should win that match. That the player is much is far below you, and you probably should lose, but it doesn't mean you will on either side. There is still some level of uncertainty there, but that middle match, the one that's right in your zone, does create a lot of uncertainty. And when we have uncertainty, it tends to drive certain feelings tends to drive certain decisions that go into it. And I think kind of on the maladaptive side of things, we might feel stress, we might feel anxiety about you know needing to play well, I, I want to play well, I want to win, right? A lot of obviously outcome focused type of thoughts going through the mind at that point. And we have to learn to become more accustomed to this sense of uncertainty in sport and develop a good relationship with it so that it has, as we go along, less and less power over us. Um, you know, and we've kind of talked around this particular topic in, in a number of ways when we've discussed pressure training. Part of pressure training is becoming accustomed to the uncertainty. The uncertainty of it is one of those sources of pressure and stress that is happening in a tennis match. And the more accustomed we come to it, uh, the less power it has. And perhaps we also have to develop a better perspective on why uncertainty is perhaps a good thing. You've named one reason, Josh, because that's where the excitement of a sport comes in. Even put yourself in the um, position of being a fan. Do 
maybe you enjoy seeing great teams and just how they perform. But after a while, watching a great team maybe crush other teams over and over and over again, it becomes a, a little bit boring at that point. Um, we are also love to see upsets as well. But great games are between you know, teams or, or uh, even individuals that are so closely matched that we have no idea how it's going to turn out in the end. So even as a sports fan, those are the matchups that really appeal to people where that uncertainty factor is higher. And so how do we learn to deal with that as tennis players and athletes is really, uh, is really key. So um, what are some perspectives, Josh, in your mind that can help us you know, begin to create a better relationship with this notion of uncertainty? We've already identified the one, the kind of the excitement factor, but what else? Yeah, I mean, I think starting with our motivation is is definitely key, making sure that we have a clear reason for why we're playing in the first place um, and understanding that the reason for why we play is not just for our results. And it's not just to have a higher ranking and a higher rating that we're trying to get more out of out of our sporting experience and that it's it's about more than that. So I think that's one mindset tool that, that we can think about, certainly. Um, other than that, I think we want to really focus on how we prepare going into matches. Um, and Brian, you mentioned certain situations where, you know, where there is more uncertainty when you're playing someone more of a similar similar level or perceived similar level. And that's absolutely true. So when we go into a match like that, how how can we best prepare for that uncertainty? How can we plan ahead for it? Can we really make sure that we're being solid with our pre-match routine? What are we doing to maybe release some of the nerves or anxiety related to that? Does that mean we're we're really focusing on um on doing some breathing or meditation before a match? Does that mean that we're really reviewing how we're going to talk to ourselves when we're out there? If we feel that our self-talk can drift over more towards Jeff just focusing on winning and losing and, and the end result and not focusing on our process in terms of how we get there. Um, what else can we plan out? Can we, can we, um, really come up with a plan to review certain reminders that we have for ourselves? Um, and, you know, and, and review those during that pre-match time, make that part of our pre-match routine. Can we visualize? And can that be a part of our pre-match routine? Um, so I think focusing on that pre-match routine, having a clear plan for what you do going into matches can make it feel more like a system rather than feeling like you're winging it when you're out there. And I think that gives us a better chance to perform well and to focus on what are those factors that I really need to focus on rather than getting so wrapped up in the uncertainty and not knowing what could happen and then letting that change the way that we feel and play ultimately. One of the benefits of preparing well, and I think this is an, uh, an area, Josh, where we can – let's look at professional athletes. Professional athletes put a lot into how they prepare for competition. So that could even be an ask we have of the audience is, can you, can you learn to go pro in your preparation activities? Because what does that do? It hopefully helps you to create a little bit more a sense of predictability and control. It's not going to be absolute. You can't guarantee, again, the result. But if you prepare well, prepare like a pro, you're starting to maybe – control some of these variables in a more intentional way that can help you to be in a more predictable state when you take the court as opposed to just winging it which means you show up on the court in whatever mood focus confidence level based on the situ you know the circumstances of your day and so you kind of carry that with you to the court if we go pro in terms of our preparation now you're you're adding a level of intention and, and predictability to how you want to feel out there. So I think that's a really great beginning as well is I want to tr 
try to begin to take as much control of the environment as I can uh, so that I can eliminate certain variables having a major impact um, on the performance today. I think the other piece that we were talking before we began to record, that this is very related to our episode on acceptance. One of the ways that we develop a better relationship with uncertainty is we accept it, that it is it is the reality, and we don't want to fight that um, because it won't change. So the more that we understand that Yes, it's, uh, we don't know what exactly will happen. We don't know exactly how we'll play today. But can we just accept it and, and try to take on that, that challenge and understand that this is why I play. This is what's exciting about the sport. And whatever happens, I'll come out of it, hopefully a stronger player. I'll come out of it having learned something and I can move my game, game forward. So, uh, yeah, we can, I think, use uncertainty as maybe a positive thing here. It's going to help us grow. It's going to help us become better at our preparation. It's going to help us become better at dealing with pressure. Um, and then I think we also can learn how does uncertainty play a factor during the match? Because in that, that tough matchup, Probably, you know, more often than not, that'll be a close match. Be close sets. So how, how do we deal with some of the uncertainty when it's, say, 4-all or 5-all? Those are key things. You know, there are definitely some things that could happen in those situations that we can learn from, for sure, uh, so that we can deal with those situations better in the future. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, you can expect when you're playing in a match like that, you could expect close matches. You could expect um, high pressure points. You could expect maybe a tiebreaker. You could expect maybe a third set. You could expect deuce points, break points. You could expect all of that. So can we go in ready for all that? Can we embrace that when it happens? Um, rather than being there and viewing those situations as a threat, can we view it, view it as a challenge? And even view it as a challenge at that I want to be better at how I play in these situations. And this is another opportunity to to be there. I mean, I think so much of you know our mindset has to do with framing. How do we frame a certain situation? How do we view a situation? All right, this is the situation. How are we going to respond to it? And I think that all starts with how we frame it, how we view it. Um, when I was listening listening to the audio book for um, golf is not a game of perfect. Bob Rotella was referencing a professional golfer whose name I, I'm not thinking of right now, but he would talk about how he would, the golfer would hit a shot, you know, when he wouldn't hit his best shot, when he'd hit a shot into the woods, uh, the golfer would say to himself, you got to love it. You got to love it. You know, it's, it's going to happen sometimes. Can we learn to embrace those moments? Can a tennis player say the same thing to themselves after a double fault? You got to love it, right? And and view it with more, in, I guess, a little bit more of a lighthearted way. Like, hey, this is going to happen sometimes. You're going to miss overheads. You're going to miss shots when you're two feet away from the net on, on an easy put-away volley. You know, you're, you're going to lose matches that, where you feel like you shouldn't, where you feel like you're playing a player who's lower level than you, it's going to happen. And if we can learn to embrace it, if we can say you got to love it or that's that's life, that's tennis, then it becomes a lot – it almost takes some of the power away from that situation that we're, that we're so worried about, right? Life goes on. There will be other tennis matches. There will be other opportunities, but – in a certain way, it puts things into perspective. It's not the end of the world, the fact that this golfer hit hit that shot into the woods. Maybe he's going to bogey or double bogey, um, but life goes on, and, he, and he's able to embrace it. And the same thing is true in tennis, whether that's more on a point-by-point -point basis in terms of you miss an easy shot or your opponent hits a winner on you, or in terms of the match. Okay, worst comes to worst, I lose this match today. And yes, that could happen. But I think 
recognizing that, accepting that makes it a lot easier to to reconcile and it and it, it almost takes some of the power away. It's a little bit less scary when we go into a match knowing that we could lose, but I'm going to do my best and I'm accepting the fact that I could lose. Anything could happen out there, but that that can't be where my focus is the whole time. I need to be focused on my process, on what I need to do point by point, regardless of what's happened up to that point, regardless of what could happen. Really, when we're talking about uncertainty, we're talking about the future, we're talking about what could potentially happen. And if we're too focused on that, especially during a match, but, but also leading up to a match, then we're not being present. Then we're not being where our feet are. We're not being in this moment. And we're focusing on what could happen. If we're in between points and we're focusing on the uncertainty of the end result of a match, which I think is where a lot of people are. I think a lot of people's thoughts will drift towards that point of winning and losing, results, UTR, rankings, beating somebody, winning a tournament, things like that. If we're focused on those things and we're not focused on what we need to do in the next point, we're not focused on our own game. We're not focused on our opponent's weaknesses. We're not focused on watching the ball and moving our feet on what playing style we want to have. We're not focused on any of those things because we're focused on the result that we want and the uncertainty of what could or might happen with that result. So I think that's another important point here that we want to really make sure that we we can recognize and catch ourselves and be aware enough to to notice when we are in the future, when we're, we're, when we're focusing on that uncertainty and be able to redirect that focus towards something controllable like focusing on the next point and focusing on some of those factors that I mentioned and, and that we've talked about um, that, that can help you have a better chance going into that next point. For sure. And one of the reasons that I think a lot of players – do find stress in that match that they should win is that there is a possibility that they'll lose. But what's the real uncertainty? The uncertainty is beyond the result. What will everybody think? I have lost. What will even I think of myself here that I've lost this this match? So uh, you know, in just doing some reading ahead of uh, today's episode, I came across this one definition that I, I like about uncertainty and, and um, how it sort of manifests itself into the sport realm. So uncertainty is the inability to predict the future, especially if the doubt centers on the experience of potentially unpleasant events like punishment, physical harm, failure, or rejection. Um that's certainly, if you think about some of junior tennis, there, there could be some of those unpleasant events, maybe a real possibility for some players. Um, certainly, even at the adult level, there may be uh, this avoidance of failure or rejection, uh, how you, you know, project a match onto your identity as a player. So, yeah, while there is uncertainty in the outcome, there's also uncertainty of what happens after. And um, again, we have to learn to try to deal with that the best that we can. And, you know, another way of framing this one, Josh, is at least for adult players or, you know, junior players who are, say, 17, 18 in college or so, is can we look at this as simply part of the learning process? That none of these matches are really the end of your career. Um, and so it's pretty normal to lose matches. I think we've all probably lost to somebody we shouldn't have lost to. On the flip side, we've also probably played great or even beaten some people who we had no business beating. And in that middle matchup, we've won those matches, we've lost those matches, and it's just part of the challenge, part of the journey that we, we get used to that. Um, so there, you know, there are. I think there are almost levels of uncertainty in different things. Yeah, there's the level of uncertainty that goes into the match, but then there's the beyond piece. And think about, especially, I think junior players, but also adult league players, will say things like this: that everybody expects me to win. Right there, you're you're introducing more levels of uncertainty than perhaps you actually need in this moment. 
match being uncertain is kind of enough. We don't really need to be worried about what will everyone think. Because that's another sort of outside of our control type of item. Not, I would yeah, maybe it's an outcome. I guess we could call it an outcome uh, of you know or a result of something else happening. We can't control that so much, but it's understandable how the uncertainty there can also factor into into performance. When I think about some of the effects of uncertainty during a match, a lot of it can be around stress and decision making. As you get to the ends of a set that pressure, that uncertainty begins to build. And very often, we make poor decisions. We're looking to end it somehow. And we perhaps abandon our process. We abandon our games. And something I've been noticing with a lot of the players that I work with is the way we're phrasing it is, you didn't trust yourself and your game in that moment. Why? What happened? What caused you to stop trusting yourself? And one of the lessons learned there is when we do get into these moments of uncertainty and stress, can we go to our discipline and our process and our game and learn to trust it more and see if it will deliver rather than trying to end points quickly? Um, Etc. Right, trying to be more aggressive when maybe that's not your game. Going for lines, that's all the the pressure and the uncertainty are now corrupting your decision making process, and um, becomes very difficult then to refine yourself and and refine your confidence and your trust. Right. So um, that's actually been something we've I've been working on with a lot of the players. Is okay. What is your game? What is your process? What is your system of playing? And can you learn to trust that enough to deliver for you in these big moments? It's probably what got you to the business part of the set. Can we can we trust it more to get you to the end? But that's where the stress and the uncertainty often manifest itself in terms of your decision making. You tend to, to bail on what you're really good at and, and start trying to force the result in some way and just not trust the process. Absolutely. I think trusting trusting the process is definitely key. And I think trusting your game. Trusting your game and that doesn't mean you're going to win. That doesn't mean you're going to play well. But it means that you trust that you're able to, to play at a reasonable level and that you're not constantly thinking about your game and thinking about your technique and focusing on can I beat this person? Is this person better than me? Comparing that sort of thing. But instead able to trust that you have a chance based on the tools that you that you have on that particular day. And those tools could look a little bit different. Some days your game is going to be at a higher level than others. And that's true of everybody including the best players in the world. But can you trust yourself as a competitor, can you trust that you're really going to go out there and compete and try to give yourself the best possible chance? Can you trust yourself as a problem solver that you can be a problem solver, try to figure out the puzzle of your opponent and try to figure out what you need to do against that opponent, figure out their weaknesses, figure out your, your own strengths, maybe your strengths on that particular day. How can you play more from your strength to your opponent's weakness? Um, can you trust other abilities? Maybe you're working on, maybe you've been working on your serve, but that trust piece isn't quite there. Can you get to that point of, of fully trusting your serve and going for it or of, you know, of figuring out, how much you need to go for it or what is the serve that you want to hit or maybe it's a kick serve or, or whatever it is. Um, but I think in terms of not, I, would, I don't even want to say overcoming uncertainty because as we said, it's always there, but handling it. Um, yeah. I, I think first of all, it's a, a big piece is just recognizing with, you know, reckoning with certain facts that, Uncertainty will be there. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, we don't know how we're going to play. We don't know 
what other people are going to think. Uh, but ultimately, these are the pieces out of our control, too. We talk a lot about controlling the controllables, and people have heard heard that a lot from me, from us, on on, on our episodes. But I, I think when we think about uncertainty, it really focuses on a lot of uncontrollable factors, things like our result, right? We can impact the result. There's there are certainly things that we could do to give us a better chance to have the result that we want, but we can't control it. You know, we can't control the opponent's level. We can't control the opponent's line calls. We can't control the weather. We can't control a number of different things. And the uncertainty of those things that are out of our control will always be there. And we could, that can be where our focus is, where our focus and our attention is, or we can be accepting of those factors and really try to focus on what can I do something about? What can I do something about that can also impact the result? Just like the opponent's line calls can impact the result, so can my attitude. So can my decision making. So can my preparation. So can you know my self-talk, my routines, so many of these other pieces. So we ultimately have the choice of is my focus on the end result is my focus on the uncertainty is my focus on what other people might think or is my focus on these pieces that that i can actually control and impact that can give me a better chance to be successful and you know for for most people it shifts it shifts it's not it's not stable it's not fixed uh it's not fixed one place or the other it's not like okay i've thinking the entire match at between every single point about what the score is and about the end result or focusing, you know, every single point on just the next point and doing my best in that next point. For most people, there is some sort of mix, but I think through training the mental game, through having a clear plan for what you do in between points, you can start to focus more on these things in between th these things that you could actually control and impact and, overcome some of that uncertainty because you've accepted it, because you've accepted that it will always be there. It's not, it's not going anywhere. And maybe I shouldn't have said overcome, but, but yeah, it's, it's more about, can we acknowledge it, acknowledge, accept it and still go and play and play our game without letting that hold us back. Right. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And I think, Another thing to look at for us is the role of the performance team in dealing with uncertainty. Because a lot of what I was saying earlier had to do with not so much the uncertainty of the match, but sort of post. And let's say you're a coach or a teammate. Um, how can you reduce levels of uncertainty of what will occur if this player loses? And certainly as coaches, we can do that. We can we can acknowledge that we're proud of our players, not just because they win, but for their character, their effort, their attitude, that those are the things that we're really most um, really looking for. So whenever they perform, hey, those are controllable things. So I can, I don't have to worry about unpleasant emotions from my coach or um, you know, any sort of consequences from the coach if I lose, as long as I do the things that I'm in control of well. The same can be said of teammates. I think, especially in college tennis, and in general, I think this is very, very good because everybody on the team gets it. We're all in the same situation. We're all out there trying our best. And once you learn to understand that your teammates have your back, a level of uncertainty there goes away. So it's important that the social support around the player be very strong and as you're saying Josh very fixed on the controllable aspects but that there are no unpleasant consequences with going out there trying your best playing with great attitude and losing that that actually is is something where we're proud of you for going out there and battling through that i think that's super important for us to to address uh, with coaching, and certainly parents can be doing the same thing. That we don't want unpleasant consequences of a loss in which someone played with great attitude and great effort. 
Also, you know, sometimes we don't play with great attitude and great effort. And that's an opportunity to come in with some curiosity and empathy. What happened out there? Because <clears throat> we're often, again, we, 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 we tend to punish sometimes things like that without understanding that I don't think most players, Josh, go out onto the court intending to act poorly, intending to lose their temper, to tank, and, and just do b- bad things, right? No one really walks out on the court saying, I can't wait to, to, to be acting badly today and blow this match up. So when it happens, can we still, while we may not be happy that that's the way it went, but clearly something drove the player to that level of behavior. There was no intention to create that. So what happened? Can we approach that as a coach, as a parent, as a teammate with curiosity and empathy? And I say empathy because tennis is hard. It's very hard to do this well. A lot of technical stuff going on. It's very dynamic. It's very physical. You have a direct opponent. This is not an easy sport to play. So we first... So empathy to me is recognizing how hard this is, but something out there happened. Want to know more about that? Apply that with curiosity so that it happens less out there. We're not obviously condoning the behavior that happens, but recognize that it is a teachable moment there. And uncertainty probably played a part in some way. And maybe that's a, a line of inquiry we can get into with players or at least have it in the back of our mind. All right, are there certain uncertainty principles going on here that maybe I can address? Maybe there, maybe there's some of them I can't address. Some I probably can't, like the, the matchup and, and things like that. But if we can learn to listen and apply curiosity and empathy to what's going on in the court, then our players have a good chance of building on that experience and, and making it better and better and better throughout. Um, and then they can begin to develop a better relationship with the uncertainty and stress that's experienced in sport so that they can, as you said, not overcome it, Josh, but become comfortable with it, befriend it, so that it's a normal part of it and it's it's not something that that they fear, but it's something that they can embrace. Definitely. Definitely. And I think when as we talk more about this concept, it really reminds me that, you know, every time you go out there and play a match, your people tend to really focus on that match. And um, they care a lot about winning that match. And of course, and, and they're, they're, they're competitive, they're trying to be a great competitor, and they really want to win that match. But can we instead get to that point where we're able to really focus on the long term and focus on becoming the best person we can be, the best player we can be, and recognizing that what we do um, match by match is just a stepping stone. It's just one piece along that journey. And we're trying to get a little bit closer to where we're trying to be. Um, but it's it's ultimately one one piece, right? It, it's just one one milestone. Um, so you know, through each time we're out there, we have the opportunity to get a little bit closer and to be, I think, by being a little bit more accepting of that uncertainty, by really committing to giving our best effort each point, regardless of what's happened going up to that, go you know, up going up to that point in the match. Um, really trying to prepare in the best possible way, doing all of these things, all these controllable things in the best possible way, you give yourself the best possible chance to continue in a positive direction to, you know, to, to not get held back by your results, by the uncertainty, by some of these other factors, right? So if we can have more of a long-term perspective, I think it becomes a lot easier to overcome the uncertainty of any one particular match because it really is just one match. And as we've talked about, everybody has gone through that. Every single person has lost to somebody that they think that they shouldn't 
have lost to. If they haven't, then they probably haven't played very many matches, honestly. Um, and, and we see it with the best players in the world, too. World number ones, ATP, WTA players, will will lose to people and do lose to people that are ranked lower than them. Maybe they're injured. Maybe they're not at their best. Maybe they... Maybe something happened, um, but it you know it happens to the best players in the world. It will happen to you. So I think if we could have a longer term perspective and understand that each match maybe isn't as important as we think of it in the moment, we think of it like okay, everything rides on this match. This is super important. Um, if we can understand that this is a my mi- this is one milestone along that journey, I think it takes some of that power away from that uncertainty and instead we can recognize the match for what it is it's another quiz another test along that journey and and yes we want to do great in it but if we don't if we lose it's not the end of the world and then i think it becomes a lot easier to really focus on our game at that point once we've gotten to that point where we can acknowledge that and accept that even if it feels like it's a really important match that life will go on if we don't win it. Um, I think it's a lot easier than to really focus on playing your game and playing your best, knowing that you could win or lose, but that's, but that's life. Yeah. And and I think that's actually the, the next step there is, is in life, a lot of uncertainty and can we use our experiences on the tennis court to be transferable skills to dealing with those things in life as well. Uh, as we've mentioned a few times here, ultimately that's that that is what tennis is doing for the majority of us. It is a place to practice these different character skills and use them, transfer them to other aspects of our lives so that we can be stronger people, have great great character in other things that we do. And I think that that's, uh, yeah, uncertainty is certainly something that is a, a, a daily part of our lives. So how can we learn to um, perhaps reduce the influence of it or even make some factors of uncertainty more more predictable as we, as we go along? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, uh, yeah, no, as we think more about this concept or start to wrap up this concept, it really is that, yeah, it, it will, you know, maybe even getting back to the point where we started, that it, it's inevitable. And I know we sometimes use that that word, but it's especially I think it with this concept, it's true. You know, the, the uncert, uncertainty will be there. And, and yes, there are certain matches maybe where you're playing a similar level opponent where maybe there's more of it, but it, it's going to be there. You know, it, I think sometimes it, it also shows up when we play someone who's, ranked or rated lower than us, someone who we perceive to be a weaker player. And there's that uncertainty in the back of your mind that, you know, what if I lose? What if I, you know, what are people going to think? What is that going to do to my UTR? Um, so instead of that, can we accept it? Can can we get to that point of acknowledging, accepting it, and then we can go on and play our match? And give ourselves the best possible chance point by point rather than fixating on our results, rather than fixating just on this one match and instead understand that we will win and lose, but we want to, yeah, we, we, we want to be the best competitor we can be and through competing in the best possible way and, you know, giving ourselves the best chance every time we're out there, we're, we're becoming better players. We're becoming better people along the way, or at least that's the goal. Exactly. Yeah. So uncertainty is there. It's a, it's a constant. It's inevitable, as you said, Josh. Uh, it's something we all have to deal with, and um, and hopefully this has provided a little bit of a different perspective and, and way to look at what's happening with you on the court and, and perhaps a few things that you can try. So thank you all for listening. For more on today's episode, you can check out the show notes. If you have any feedback or questions for me. Or Josh, please email us at tennisiqpodcast at gmail.com. Also, if you have a moment, please rate and review the podcast so others can find it. Additionally, please subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice, including YouTube, so you can be notified of new episodes. And you can also check us out on Instagram. If you would like to support the podcast, 
please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash tennis IQ podcast slash membership, where you can learn about the benefits of being part of the tennis IQ podcast community. Thanks again. And we'll talk to you soon in our next episode.